Germany, 9 AD. The governor of the new Roman province of Germania, Publius Quintilius Varus, is getting ready to leave his summer camp on the banks of the river Wasser. He and his men had been there collecting taxes, building bridges, watchtowers, and dealing with the general administration of the region. The landmass between the Rhine and the river Elbe had been conquered some years ago by Nero Claudius Drusus, although it had not yet been fully encompassed into the empire. Rome was to bring the bickering tribes of the densely forested and swamp-filled lands under Roman law in order to pacify and tax the population. Accompanying Varus was the 17th, 18th and 19th legions, six cohorts of auxiliary troops, three squadrons of cavalry, tax collectors, traders and their families, all of which set out on that fateful day in September, heading for their winter camp located at Xanten on the River Rhine, some 200 kilometres away. Sometime after beginning their long march, reports of a local uprising of Germanic tribes in the area had started to come in. Varus, after consulting with his officers, decided to deal with the uprising swiftly before it got out of hand, and dispatched his auxiliary captain Arminius to collect reinforcements from the surrounding area. Arminius, being of German origin, knew the land very well, and suggested a good place for an ambush, which was off the beaten track inside of the dense forest before he left to rally the men in the surrounding area. Varus marched his troops, their baggage train, women and children, and the other civilians to the site of the ambush in a careless fashion. He made the mistake of not sending any scouts ahead or even to march his men in battle-ready formation, allowing the soldiers to intermingle with the civilians in the column. Once inside the forest, the going was hard. Making their way through the dense collection of trees, it started to rain. The ground, which was soft underfoot, now became a quagmire of mud. Varius's column, which stretched for 8 to 9 miles long, or 11 to 13 kilometres, moved along at a snail's pace, through the thick, inundated mass of trees and mud, sodden from the unceasing rain, until the second day, when they reached a place called Calcris. Calcris was a narrow opening between a marsh on one side and a large forested hill on the other. Unknown to Varus, his auxiliary captain Arminius was lying in wait for the Roman column with a massive German force poised to destroy them. The Germans had fortified a position on the hill in which they hid while the Roman column moved in front of them. Silently they waited until roughly half of the column had passed and then they attacked the centre, effectively cutting the army in two. The Roman lead column tried to counterattack, but was overwhelmed and pushed back into the marshland and slaughtered. Varus, who was in the rear group, put up a bedded fence and was able to fight their way out, retreating to a nearby hill and quickly constructing a fortified camp. Here they stayed all night, fending off German attacks until the morning. As day broke on the third day, Varus and his remaining men decided to leave the civilians behind and destroy the baggage and anything that would slow them down and make a break for it. Their only chance would be a Roman stronghold on the Lippe River that Drusus had founded some years before. As they made their escape, a second ambush hit them. After a period of bitter fighting in the heavy rain, the Romans realised they were surrounded. A Roman cavalry commander named Pneumonius Valor decided to try and escape to get reinforcements, but was caught by German mounted warriors and slain. Knowing all hope was lost, Quintilius Varus committed suicide. Prefectus Agaius took over command and continued the fight, but this was in vain, as he was eventually killed as Arminius closed the net around him and his remaining men. The army, which only a few days before had numbered over 16,000, had been annihilated. Varus's head was removed from his body by Arminius and sent to the chief of the Marcomanni tribe with a request for an alliance. This would be rejected, and Varus's head would be sent to Rome while any remaining prisoners would be crucified in the forest or sacrificed to the Germanic gods by burning them in wicker cages. There is also some evidence that some of the Romans were ritualistically cooked in large pots. When news of the massive defeat reached Augustus Caesar, he apparently screamed out, Quintilius Varus, give me back my legions! Augustus over the next few months seemed to enter a state of deep depression, growing his hair and his beard. Even months later, it is said he would randomly scream out, Quintilius Varus, give me back my legions. The legions of the 17th, 18th and 19th would never again be reformed. And Augustus would pull his forces back to the Rhine, 
making the river the boundary of the empire. Although excursions were made into Germania, the idea of provincialising the region was now put on the back burner. It is said that if it were not for Arminius, or Hermann as he is known in Germany, the existence of the German and English language would not have survived to the modern day. This is due to the French and Spanish languages being Latinized by the Roman occupation. So why did Arminius betray Rome? To answer this we need to look at Arminius' past. Arminius and his brother Flavius belonged to the Cherusi tribe, who were once enemies of Rome. They inhabited modern day Hanover in northwest Germany. As part of an alliance deal with the Romans, hostages were given which was common practice in those times in order to maintain peace. Arminius and his brother, who were from noble stock in the Cherusi, were to be those hostages. At the age of 10, Arminius and his brother were handed over to the Romans and sent to Rome to be educated on the Palatine Hill, where he learned Latin and how to conduct himself as a Roman, and later trained in the Roman army, where he becomes a captain in Rome's auxiliary forces. It is thought that Arminius and his brother had gained battlefield experience fighting under Tiberius Claudius Nero in the Pannonian revolts of 6 AD. In 8 AD, Arminius is then transferred to the Rhine legions under Quintilius Varus, where he became a trusted soldier for Varus and was seen as an integral part to the operation in Germania, as he knew the land and its people, as he was one of them. Although Varus believed Arminius was loyal to Rome, as he was a Roman citizen and had achieved the title of Equites, which in Roman society was one rank below the senatorial class, equivalent to being a knight. Equites simply means a horse or cavalry. Varus's job was to take the German tribal regions and turn them into a fully fledged united Roman province. Varus's methods of pacification were harsh. He demanded tribute from the natives and treated them with contempt. It is believed that when Arminius saw his people being treated this way, he decided to unite the tribes under himself and drive the Romans out. Arminius was able to keep the deception alive so well that when a rival German tribal chief told Varus that he should not trust Arminius, his information was dismissed as rival jealousy. After the destruction of Varus's three legions and their supporting troops, Arminius would go on to remove in the rest of the Roman forces east of the river Rhine. In the years 10 to 11 AD, Tiberius would conduct skirmishes into Germania, enslaving and burning villages in retaliation. But, with the failing health of Augustus, would return to the capital of Rome, leaving his nephew Germanicus, who was the son of Drusus, to guard the Rhine. In 14 AD, through Germanicus, Rome would revisit the battlefield of the Lost Three Legions, and eventually have its revenge. <laughs>